Usage-based theory rejects the idea of universal grammar. The universal grammar is the idea that humans are born with a language blueprint, made up of general principles of language that guides the development of a child's mother tongue. The argument made by Chomsky of universal grammar is that infants or children need to born with this language blueprint because they don't have the cognitive skills to be able to grasp the abstract grammar on their own languages. And in any case, they don't receive the right kind of language input to be able to work out the rules for themselves. What's called the puberty of the input hypothesis. Therefore, babies must be born with a rudimentary grammar in their heads, but one that applies to all languages, a universal grammar, which infants or children can then modify based on input from their own mother tongue. Universal grammar argues that grammar is a driving force behind language, that grammar generates language. It places grammar at the heart of language development, with things like the lexicon and pragmatics, subservient to grammar. If you know the rules of grammar, sex exponent of what is called generative grammar, you can construct an almost limitless array of language. But in the last 20 years, a new view of language learning has emerged. One claiming that grammatical rules are simply patterns that occur in language, and that an understanding of these patterns comes from language use. In other words, language use generates grammar. Usage based theory supposes that children are not born with a universal dedicated tool for learning grammar. Instead, they inherit the mental equivalent of a Swiss army knife, that it is a set of general purposes tool, such as categorization, the reading of communicative intentions, and analogy, making with which children build grammatical categories and rules from the language they hear around them. The meaning in language emerges through an interaction between the potential meaning of the words themselves and the meaning of the grammatical construction in which they are clutched. The usage-based theory of language acquisition was introduced by Michael Tomasolo in 2003. He was born in January 18, 1950. He's an American developmental and comparative psychologist as well as a linguist. His work, Constructing a Language, a Usage-Based Theory of Language Acquisition, published in 2003, was the winner of the Cognitive Development Society Book Award 2005 edition. In this groundbreaking book, Michael Tomasello presents a comprehensive usage-based theory of language acquisition, drawing together a vast body of empirical research in cognitive science, linguistics, and developmental psychology Tomasello demonstrates that we don't need a self-contained language instinct to explain how children learn language. Their linguistic ability is interwoven with other cognitive abilities. In Tomasello's current theory of language acquisition, language is treated not as a specific biological adaptation, but rather as a form of cognition that children develop through regular interaction with adult speakers. The fundamental claim of the usage-based language learning theory is that language acquisition emerges from the language use. In other words, we learn language structures and words by using the language and by understanding the language that other people use. This theory is essentially a first language acquisition theory, but it has ramifications for second language learning. The theory argues that infants start to develop the cognitive skills for language acquisition between the ages of 9 and 12 months. These cognitive skills, together with the opportunities to connect language with experience, are really all they need to acquire their mother tongue. There are two broad sets of cognitive skills that come into play around this time. Intention reading skills and patterns for Intention reading. 
what children must do to determine the goals or intentions of major speakers when they use linguistic conventions to achieve social ends. Pattern finding, what children must do in order to extract abstract linguistic constructions from the individual utterances. Therefore, this theory has two main dimensions, functional and grammatical. To Masala argues, much of our language use is formulaic. That is, we recycle phrasal constructions that we have memorized from prior use. Language learning is in large part implicit, in the sense of taking place without the learner being consciously aware of it. Some characteristics of this hypothesis are that the usage-based approaches assume that all language knowledge is constructed on the basis of the input, and learning takes place implicitly during meaning-focused input processing. This hypothesis also says that the relationship between quality and quantity of input is important because the input to which adult second language learners are exposed to is fundamentally different in both quantity and quality from the first language input which is typically available to young children. How does this theory work? In the usage-based learning theory, children do not learn words directly. They instead try to understand what is said to them. For example, their father asked them to throw the ball. A young child must understand that his or her dad wants him or her to throw the ball. This theory is also based around the idea that the language is learned by its usage. The UV theory it has three objections. The first one is that it cannot deal with more complex structures. For example, the ones that are required to have two verbs or synthetic embedding. The second one is that it cannot specify how the generalization process is to be constrained. And the third one is that it cannot deal with the called poverty of stimulus. In brief, language is a complex adaptive system that comprises the interactions of many players. First, people who want to communicate. Second, the world to be talked about. It operates across many different levels, different human configuration, and different timescales.